Hello and welcome to, I guess, part two of how not to build a Megabot. Um, you probably saw the design that I semi came up with yesterday, or you may or may not have seen it anyway. Uh, so I'm just continuing to evolve on that concept and see exactly where it takes us. Uh, so yeah, the last thing you should have seen in yesterday's stream was this hovercraft, which um, is mostly electroplated on the outside. It's a little bit weak around here uh, from weapons fire. Um, it's kind of a skeleton, really, but I've still got 1500 blocks to play with in terms of reinforcing this, so that's kind of what I'm trying to do. Um, it's not going to be the prettiest build. Um, yeah, and it's certainly not planned, hence the how not to build a Megabot thingy. Title, that's it. But, yeah, I'm enjoying myself with uh, this. So I guess that's the important part. And there's things like these, I need connection points for these guns going up into the chassis and all that kind of jazz. Uh, just haven't got to messing around with any of those features yet. Anyway. Uh, the scalloping, purely cosmetic, and most of this is probably going to get taken out and replaced with lower, lighter blocks or something. Um, let's buy a bunch more inners. Of course, I don't have enough cubes to actually complete this design, so that's always part of the fun. Mostly what I'm aiming for on this segment is just to strengthen the base that runs along here. Uh, we're going to grab some prisms, and yeah, these are going to get switched out. Probably just make that into prisms, it's just connection points up onto these spars here. Uh, that we can connect down, connect up, like so. Yeah, I don't know if I want... Um, how have we got this connected on here? Probably want to put a block on this side as a kind of some form of protection. Uh, we'll convert these. Yeah. That way we've got some protective type thing going on there. And we'll do the same thing on the front here as well. Okay, so that makes the main plate on this design a little bit more solid. Um, so what do I need to do now? Um, think, think, think. This is a little bit vulnerable to fire. Too easy to shoot off, so I need to reinforce that. And that's going to require doing some magics with these blocks. Depends how I actually want the connection points to be. Let's have the connection points go down. So that's some triforcing or spacing art, spaced armor around that connection point there. 
Should probably replace that with something a little bit more resilient. And the front one here will have the same kind of treatment going on. Uh, so let's pull that block off. And can I even do that without having to pull armor off or anything like that? Not easily. There we go. Just to make sure at least one of these blocks is relatively well secured. And if you're worrying, uh, wondering about all the purple blocks on here, that's a uh, resultant of me um, basically stripping down another design and just um, deciding to compact it a lot. And it kind of ended up with this. So, um, yeah, it's actually surprisingly effective. I was surprised at just how well it did in the first battle so uh, that's why I'm iterating on the concept to see where we can go um, anyway let's make sure we get these connected over don't want that connected directly to this point because it's too many vulnerabilities on weak sections and I don't really like having this spar just so weak as well um, I will do okay I can't fit any of these in here Can I fit any prisms? Nope, they're not going to like it. So we do want to reinforce that, however. And this can actually bought, be brought across at an angle instead. Although that gives no connection point. Still not as strong as we'd like, so we're going to pull those ones up. I just put a block in there and connect up like this. Uh, but that's still a relatively weak connection, so we then pull another one across there. And we still have weaker points in here like this, but it just gives us a little bit more scope in terms of expanding out on that. Um, so we can do something like... This for a slightly more refined segment. trying to keep most of the mass below the main hovers as well. Right, that I'm going to change for um, a TX cube. We always want to try and keep at least one TX cube on most of these connection points because they're relatively critical to the longevity of the design. Now, do I want these to be... yeah, let's invert these. So, 
so they're not directly connected to this block. It means damage gets routed through to this section. Um, yeah, and we don't want that directly connected either. On the same respect, we don't want this directly connected, so we want to... we can't replace that block. Let's put that as another... You know, like so. And we'll have that connect down to there instead. And these can be replaced with inners, well not inners, tetras rather. We don't need the additional weight on the top, although having a stronger spar across here would not be a bad thing. Um, we do definitely want to bring this out and make it a little bit stronger, because at the moment all you have to do is take out this one block and we lose this gun completely. Um, so probably what we need to do is separate these. And convert them like so. Although I may actually, yeah, I think I'm going to leave that as a slightly wider and then this is going to port back all the way over. Where do we want to actually connect this down? Probably see if we can bring this spar all the way across the center here. Although actually, in terms of damage mitigation, we can get, we're going to use a lot more cubes for this, but it will give us the same mess. So what we'll do is we will put prisms across here, and then take these out all the way along there. That way a single hit is not going to destroy any of that stuff. And we'll put a little shroud around this end. And we could potentially put some struts down here as well. But what I'm aiming to do is connect these around onto this section here. And of course these are going to need some additional connection points as well. Uh, but we'll, we'll work on that. Um, so what do I need to do? I can bring these in by one more point I think. And then these are going to need... Probably... Yeah, let's not connect them around there so that way we can still put a protective shroud around this. Let's use some inners here. Actually I probably want to use inners here already anyway. Sort of like this, although I'd probably want to take the focus on having. Hmm. Well, 
Let's just put that in there anyway for now. Uh, but this is also where it needs to connect down to that point, so how can we rework this connection? Simple, just put it on its side. It will still have this preserve the same connection points down there. Uh, this can actually be switched out to a prism. Not prism, tetra, sorry. Ugh, I still get those mixed up. And that's now connected down here, so this gun is actually connected all the way to the front here. Caveat, of course, is if this gets destroyed, it's probably going to take out all of this support structure. So we now need to work out a way to actually have this connect to somewhere that's a little bit tougher. Because that's quite a way, it's, it's quite a vulnerable section. Um, and we can also make it into a shroud for these hover blades here, so... And MX Danger, welcome to the stream! Even if I missed you already. two options I can either have these connected directly to each other which gives a little bit of more reinforcement or I can try force these so the um, these are not connected to each other and I'm of two minds what I actually want to do here I think either way it's not really going to make a huge amount of difference what I do, but I'm just going to try for some. And have that connection point be a little bit more resilient. And that way that acts as a little bit of a plasma shroud uh, for that hover blade. We don't have anything going over these ones yet, but we might actually be able to bridge off of this connection point over the top. And of course I've also got to do the front section. Uh, who's messaging me? Well, it's Genesis asking if I was testing my Megabot yet yesterday. And Braden Woodring, hello and welcome to the stream. Let's 
stuff. place sorry the blooping that you may be hearing in the background is someone I am in me uh, on Steam which yeah, if you want to ever talk to me I usually try to respond I'm not that reclusive or I try not to be that reclusive uh, that's not gonna work doesn't allow me to put another block in there hmm Kind of forces you to build up and over. That actually might be an idea for this in terms of having a slightly more reinforced design. Um, but yeah, the front and back on this, of course, are going to be different. Uh, Braden, they added Mega Hovers in two weeks ago now? Yeah, it would be two weeks on Thursday. So this is my first real experiment with Mega Hovers to see what you can and can't do with them. I've already got that block upgraded. Doop. Yeah, I don't really want to have that directly connected, so let's try force those. There we go, that way any damage to that has to transmit down through that block before it goes to the surrounding section. And then we need to build the bridge across here, so let's just use yellow blocks to frame. And then pull these off. That's better. Um, let's add one block in the front here just for a little bit of reinforcement and protecting that block there, otherwise it's exposed. Need to remember to do the same thing on this one here. There we go. Okay, um, can't say, how did I do that section on here? Oh yeah, I bridged up from something I had around here. Let's do the same kind of design. Let's swap that out for some slopey bits. Yes. Have these face backwards. do is have this face like that and the real ones I don't really want them connecting directly so I'm 
probably have um, armored something like this. So that adds a little bit of protection to the front hover there, and we're going to build the cocoon around this as well. Let's replace that with a reinforced block, and then. So, okay, and then we have to lighten these as well. Which I think I was using. Oh yeah, this is where... how did I do it on the back? Right, so I had this as an actual double ranked section for strength. didn't connect out like that, but we had a slightly stronger mountain point that connected down here. Which that has to stay as a normal block. What I'll do is to make sure that's preserved. We'll connect down something like that. Let's make sure one of these is more resilient. And do I want to do the same with that? Those electric plate. Oh, I haven't even put on the connection points for the front ones there either. Alright, let's go back over and get these ones on. Actually, on these ones I can use those as the facing sections. And how did I have this connected on? Right, so I connect back onto the block behind. So I'm connecting onto this block, which means this also needs to have a full series of reinforcement running along it. That means these are tetras. Like so. And we can have uh, some stronger pill support pillars on this if we really want. Uh, but we'll see just how well that holds up. I mean, I'm usually uh, on the front. We're lucky on this one. We can actually build more protection on the front. On the back one, we don't because of how close we are to the edge. I don't think... I mean, we could, in theory, nudge the design forward a little bit. I'm not sure if that'll actually work, though. I'm not sure what, what that will cause to actually get removed. Yeah, that's as far forward as we can go. Yeah, let's not worry about that for now. That's getting into too many technical issues. Um, do want to worry about making sure most of these electroplates at least have some form of mounting on them though. 
even if they're essentially connecting to the same blocks. I think we already tested this and found we couldn't put any kind of blocks on those, which is fine. Uh, which is why we also need to make sure that these are connected in more than one place. Um, how am I best positioning these? Okay, let's bring some spars across like this. Yeah. These are basically held on by paper. Oh, okay. These ones actually have more opportunity for connection. Like, there we can connect it onto those blocks. Okay. Let's get blocks onto everything that we can, just to make sure. Nope, out of blocks in the cube depot. Cube depot, okay. I don't think I can buy any more, maybe four at most. Okay, that could do me. And then we're actually going to have to run a test game with this. Alright, so that means they've all at least got a connection point on. Except for these ones here. Uh, for those we'll just have to dump some Purple box on. Let's actually connect this one back across. No our blocks. There we go. Alright, that'll do for now. Let's give it a run. This is where, with all the extra additional work I put into this, the design gets completely trashed. Um, Alright, yeah, I have this one game that I'm going to have to go blah 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 blah. Then I am going to have to go AFK for about a minute, just to move some stuff from the washing machine. And then I should be back after that. Position seven. In a world infested by blocks. If anyone has any requests for me to try and say in that in a world voice, then please go ahead and just put them into the Twitch chat or uh, when this video goes onto YouTube, just put them in a, a, as a comment underneath uh, the video and do requests and I'll see if I can accommodate them. Go 
Oh, this looks so uh, weak on the top. Okay. Uh, I'm down. But four kills, that is not a bad run. Wow. Did pretty good. Alright, um, I'll be back in just a second. Let's do the little AFK sign on the floor here.
Anyway, I'm back. Sorry about that. Yes. So we got 800k from that game. Uh, we still have 17 prisms we can use, so let's see what we can do here. Alright, that's now connected down. We didn't connect these ones up, so we need to do a similar thing here. Um, I used inners. Alright, so let's put some inners there. Just buy some more. Tetras. And then we were not connecting to the same block there. We are actually connecting to this one. So let's stand that up on its side. Solidly connected. Ah, solidly connected. All right. Um, now I see. And what I did there was I had this connected to this round. In this case, I can't really do that. So that will become an inner, like so. That kind of works, alright. Um, these are not connected to anything. We will want to have that actually connected to both of these. No! Got to have clone mode on, my bad. that everything that I changed? I think so. Oh, other than that connection point there. And of course that now gets changed to an inner, like on that side. There we go. Right, what were we doing? We were in the process of, yes, connecting these to the shroud. So we need that, that. We now don't have any more of those blocks available. Uh, so we'll have to make do with the standard inners. Well, not inners, standard prisms, like so. So that's now connected to those two rungs. I mean, we can have uh, prisons put on those, but we're not going to for now. Um, and yeah, we're still 600 cubes away from cap. So we certainly want to try and build something around here to help protect these hovers, at least from initial plasma strikes. And also to have these connected to something a little bit more resilient as well. Um, underneath, 
yeah, we're still pretty weak. We've got all of these blocks which don't have any connections. Uh, so we've only got seven of those left. Let's burn them all up in making sure that's connected there. This one here isn't connected. Um, I probably want to actually have that cross connected somewhere else instead of to the same rung. Not sure what the point of that is, other than to try and shield that connection point. I think that's probably a holdover from earlier revisions. Yeah. So these, let's get in from the top here. So yeah, these need some form of connection point being brought across. Uh, just for the sake of speed, we're going to just connect them across like that. And make sure all of these other ones have the same kind of thing. Still no way we're going to connect those on. I keep looking at those and I know that there is no answer. These ones, however, do have a solution. Which would be, again, to connect across here. Or we can build up one and connect across there. I think connecting across there might be preferred. Um, either way, I don't have enough RP to do that, so it's probably going to be back to battle uh, just after I've replaced these purple blocks, of course. Okay, and that should be most of the purple taken away from this design, except for these ones here, where I don't really have enough cubes. So, uh, back to battle. Actually, how many... I've still got some electro papers available. I wonder... That enables me to mirror things correctly. Uh, so we do actually have electric plates available. Which could mean that we could put things on like that. Which would protect those blades there nicely. But we don't have adequate connection points elsewhere. So we would want to have those actu the actual connection points somewhere further in. So we're looking about here, but to manage that, right. We would need to take this hover blade off temporarily. Mount a block underneath there and one underneath there, just to make sure we've got the two correct places. Uh, 
And that now means we're actually connected on to that block. Get the hover blades. And we should be able to put that back now. There we go. And in theory we can also connect these down as well. And that will certainly swallow up a lot more CPU. Um, but we could maybe do the same on the back as well. Yeah. Although on the back that would have to be pushed out a little bit further. Because we certainly don't have anything to connect them on correctly. I wonder if I could actually get something here. Alright, let's see how this is. Let's take a look at Protonium. into a game. the best tactic there. I'm wallowing a lot more than I was. I've got a lot more weight on me as well. Okay. Let's 
need to still make sure that I'm trying to contribute though. doing here I'm out bad gameplay by me yeah there seems to be a lot of bad gameplay by me Right, so the electric plates are actually causing it to wallow a lot more than expected on the top, so they're not really a viable solution there. And unfortunately there's not really a way to connect these back further where I need them. Not if I want a more seamless type design. I mean, actually, I might be able to do something here. Just a matter of having the spurs in the right places. Alright, so that will work there. I can't put a, can, a block there, because it's the wrong block type. Let's take another look at that again. where we had them connected before. Why do I have these sections disconnected? So that's where we had it connected before, right. I'm just trying to do some mental gymnastics here, not very well. Um, we can't move that over anymore. We can't move it back anymore without dropping it down by one. I mean... These can't be raised anymore, so that really doesn't... Okay, so we're pretty much stuck with those as they are. I guess that's the rule of thumb there. Which, that's kind of enough. Yeah, we're just better off putting another 600 blocks underneath it uh, to prevent wallowing. Uh, but yeah, for that we need to earn the RP. So let's back to battle again.
Ah, come on, get up the hill. There we go. Times two. Right, so dealing with some of the obvious structural weaknesses, let's grab a lot more of these. Make sure we're in clone mode. aren't connected across. Did I miss these ones completely? Yep, I must have done. Oop. So we have those prisms all across there connected up now. Um, and we have this string here should have been reinforced. Did we not get to the front set? I'm guessing not. Okay, well, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, but yeah, all of these um, blocks here which are actually standard cubes at the moment, or these are inners, so these need to be converted to prisms. an electro plate from the top, what the hell? Wait, no I'm not, I've got an ele electro plate on the top that shouldn't be there. Blah.
that's it. We. <laughs> wow, stability on this thing is not great. There we go. Alright, so that enables me to buy some more prisms. Let's make sure we have clone mode on. Run is over this way, and I think this is where we're missing, yep, some of the prisms here. So we've only got five actual prisms left. Where can we best put these? I mean, these don't. I mean, these aren't functional. Functional. It's just we have a lot of different structural elements that are connecting onto that. So we need that one in place. Um, these should be converted to. Tetras or whatever at the earliest opportunity. I mean, we don't have the option of changing that into a prism at the moment. So these, let's swap these out because they certainly don't need to be. Oops. And same here. to rework those ones as yet, but these can be changed into prisms, I think. How are they even connected on? Were they not? I guess they were not. Hmm. Well, that's good to know. And 
that needs to be connected on as well. So I guess we're finding out where these prisms are going. And of course we're taking off this electro plate because it doesn't need to be on the top there. For the weight that it adds on, we're just going to add a string of blocks that goes all the way across the top there. not having the best time of it, let's go and support them as best I can. Yeah. Mega's down. what happens when I came up against, uh, come up against a relatively solid design. Well, well, we need to buy more of these. Fuck, I bought the wrong blocks. Well, I can still use the Inners, not the inners, the whatever we want to call the damn things. Uh, I'm not using them there, but I am using them across here. So let's uh, X. Start with the back one.
God, that is an ugly ass design. No. Reading over the updates on the like nine days and ten days time type things. Some interesting stuff. Alright, sorry, I need to pay more attention to what I'm doing with the stream. Let's play again. I need a couple of winning games. Actually, let's just switch to my other Mega for one game, because at least this has got all the guns on it. Even though this technically isn't finished either. Still 500 CPU I can dump on this thing. Oh, 500 P flops. Yeah, CPU.
actually I've got an idea of what I can do with P flops on this one. Even though I don't really want to just add more armor onto it arbitrarily, I could lighten it up quite significantly. It's a win. It counts. So anyway, what I was saying with what I could do in terms of reinforcing this one. Let's go and buy me a load of these things. And what we put onto there, here we can subsequently use the blocks that we save on here on the hovercraft. seven of these available. a little bit more elegant at least on that section. Do we have 
any standard cubes that are still in use on this. Yep, in some places, like down here, we've got some. That's a standard cube, I think, yep. So we've saved up 23 of those. Well, that's okay. to shave off some mess. Oh yeah, on this section here. So we want to reverse like this. Actually, I'm probably more in favor of keeping that a little bit more compact on those lines. Yeah, I like that. which we can use which where were we working on the mass optimizations we'll put one actually that's the wrong side put one like that no that's still the wrong side like so That doesn't need to be a full block. We can have a prism in there. Right, that can certainly be a prism. That should actually be a tetra. up which of these can be converted into inners. I think we already checked most of these. Was I able to use inners all the way along here? Nope.
Alright, I don't think I really see any other places where I can swap out uh, normal blocks for inners at the moment. I think I already did a pretty good job on the base in terms of not using full cubes where possible, other than a few like minor places like that kind of thing. Ah. Okay. So yeah, it really is just a matter of optimizing the rest of the design down until we reduce the mass by a fair amount and then add in more strands of armoring. Alright. Do I have any tips for megabot building? Hmm. Don't build any sections that are just connected by one strand of blocks. Um, and always keep an eye out for weapon fire arcs. Um, it's very easy to have your guns placed so the other ones actually interfere with uh, your other weapons from being out of fire, but that's relatively standard practice. Um, if you wanted to build a hoverbot, make sure you've got guns top and bottom. Uh, I'm finding the most efficient design seems to be something similar to what I've got at the moment. Uh, in that you can s kind of stand side on and have all of your guns fired at once. I've only got six guns on this, although you could build a eight gun variant or something like that. Um, but yeah, if you want to try switching to hovers, make the most of the maneuverability. You have a higher hover ceiling than a lot of other vehicles. So you can actually get over terrain that you really wouldn't think you can. Um, so yeah, it depends on really if you want to do a wheel design or a hover design. But I'm actually liking the hover design because you're not as constricted on where you can move on the map. Uh, for example, I don't think I can quite climb up the cliff. But I should be able to climb up one of these little mountain segments here. And let me see if I can do that for you. just take that into account when you're building that you want to make sure with like something like a hover that you've got better overall fire arcs it's not just a matter of getting all of your guns on top so yeah so I'm almost up the mountain but not quite you know with a little bit more time and work I could get up there quite easily The other one is, if you don't already know, the Mega SMGs, you can actually get them closer together if you face them towards each other. So if you're having space issues with trying to get them mounted relatively close, face the guns towards each other and you'll find that you can actually get them a lot more compacted. Yeah. screwed up there. And 
I'll actually show you an example on this of the facing guns towards each other thing. Uh, you see where I've got these two guns there? The barrels are actually technically intersecting. Uh, but it means I can have the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 blocks apart from the center. It's 15, 16, 17, 18. 19, 20. About 22 blocks, whereas from here to here, we're looking at... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 24 blocks. So it's a two block difference, but it does make, um, it does have an impact when you're trying to build compact designs. Um, I haven't actually tried this with plasma yet. I would be interested to see just how well it did. Um, but I don't have enough pl uh, Mega Plasmas to actually go on here. Um, if you're on a budget, go with Electroplates because they're a lot cheaper overall in terms of adding to your CPU and stuff like that. But raw blocks are actually more effective in terms of hit points. They're slower to heal. Um, but you'll get a hell of a lot more hit points just from using standard armor cubes. Don't waste money on TX cubes, just use standard T10 armor cubes. At a push you can use purples, uh, purples are acceptable, but don't even bother with anything less than that. But yeah, if you just need to get a functional megabot that's up and running and you're trying to save money, you can save money by using purple cubes instead of blacks. Uh, because in terms of cost for hit points, they're the most efficient cost cube. Blacks, for the, it's almost double the cost and you don't get a significant enough hit point increase to warrant that. Um, but it will show if you go up, you know, an all-purple bot against an all-black bot, then, yeah, there's obviously going to be a difference there. That's pretty much it. Oh, and don't have more than one item connected to the same block. It's very tempted to, if you're trying to do a seamless electroplate design, to have um, electroplates mounted on corners where they're actually connecting to the same blocks. Don't do that. Uh, because it just means that if one electroplate gets taken out, the excess damage still goes through to the blocks underneath, and it gives you an increased chance of taking out the other electroplate that's connected to it. That's kind of a big no-no. Although I still see a lot of people using those kinds of designs. And the regenerator design really takes that principle to another level and actively uses it. But
That was a relatively quick aim. So I want more prisms. Need more prisms. Uh, so those have already been converted over to prisms. That can still be changed. This is the back. Yeah, okay. Oops. Yep, there we go. Oh, and the other tip for megabot building and stuff. If you've got available connection points on electric plates or anything, like if you've got a weapon, like you're connecting just the front on and you've got dangling bits, always make sure you put blocks on there because uh, the Gumbrella effect transmits damage to the connecting block, uh, especially from rails and plasmas and stuff like that. So if these connecting blocks get destroyed from the Gumbrella effect, you lose your weapon. Uh, and it obviously if you only have one, that effectively means that despite your TX gun having how much armor? Where are we? Your TX gun has supposedly 31,000 armor. A black cube only has... 933. So you get hit by certain types of weapons. Half of that damage is going to go, or 25% of that damage is going to go straight to this block. So instead of this absorbing up to 26,000 damage, you're going to lose it when you take a lot less. So, yeah, always make sure every single connection point on stuff is connected where possible. Uh, naturally, on this design, not everything's connected. That's because I'm still working on it. But, um, yeah. Probably the biggest mistake I'm seeing on a lot of designs at the moment is that. Ugh. Great. I'm almost running up on two hours, actually. I'm going to have to pull the stream there. Uh, thank you very much for everyone that's tuned in and watched. Uh, don't forget, if you missed most of the stream or something, check out the sync on uh, youtube.com forward slash robocraftbay01. Um, I've also got about two years worth of content on there. Well, not two years, a year's worth of content on there. So a lot of it's not relevant, but... I'm trying to get it updated. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I have to cut the stream there, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.